Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the celebration of Easter there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the words of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a, right, a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. 
for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Here ends this reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Our lesson comes from the 13th chapter of Matthew. We're reading verses 1 through 9 and verses 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. 
such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me now in the confession and pardon. The first proclamation of our Lord included these words, repent and believe the gospel. Therefore, let us confess our sin as a sign of true repentance. Our great and awesome God, whose voice we hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear us, we pray. We come before you as your children, we are small and weak. We need your strength and wisdom. Let us walk in beauty and make our eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset with thanksgiving. May our hands respect the things you have made. Our ears be sharp to hear your voice. Make us wise so that we may know the things you have taught your people, the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. We seek strength not to be superior to our brothers and sisters, but to live in harmony with ourselves and all of your creation. Help us to be ever ready to come to you so when life fades as a fading sunset, our spirits may come to you without shame. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God who created us from the dust of the earth and who from the dirt of sin raises us to new life Accept our repentance, forgive our sins, and restore us by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. In a normal year, we would be holding our Ash Wednesday service in the Christ Chapel. We would be there to mark the beginning of Lent and to launch our Lenten worship series. Our United Methodist women would have been busy in the kitchen preparing our lovely luncheons. You remember those scrumptious soup, delicious sandwiches, nutrition for our, soul, our bodies while we came to worship for our souls. However, this is not a normal year. And this year, instead of marking the beginning of Lent with ashes, we are beginning to mark Lent with soil. Jesus used many images from the earth in order to communicate with his agrarian audience. He spoke of fig trees and vines, fields of wheat, and in our parable today he speaks of the soil itself. Soil along the path, soil on rocky ground, soil overrun with thorns, 
and soil that is fruitful beyond expectation. Now what I have in front of me today is soil from a patio planter. Last spring, my husband and I put fresh soil in a patio planter. We mixed it in with it, a natural fertilizer. We stirred it up, we watered it, and we turned it again. We let it rest for three days. And then we went out and we sowed tomato plants. We sowed several varieties of larger tomatoes and four cherry tomato plants. Well, our larger plants didn't do as well, but our cherry tomato plants blossomed and gave us fruit well into the fall. Since then, we have removed our withering plants from that patio planter, and we have been allowing that soil to simply rest. This soil, dried by the sun and watered by the rain, it has been restoring itself. As I reflected on the parable of the sower, I realized that this parable was misnamed many years ago. Surely God is the sower of the word, and the word of God falls around us, within us, among us, and beyond us. But this parable is really about the soil. When Jesus interpreted the parable for his disciples, he reminded them that the word of God is sown first in our hearts. If it has simply lain there as scattered seed along a path, the evil one can easily come and snatch it away. Sort of like how birds can gather up the seed that fall under our bird feeders. The Word of God needs to be integrated into our hearts. For those who were listening to Jesus, the heart was the seat of thought, emotion, inspiration, motivation. Every action began in the heart. Like this soil, we must tend our hearts, daily making it soft to the touch of God's Word. We must hear the Word and attend to the Word, and the Word must find a place to grow within us. If our hearts are not soft to the sower's hand, the Word cannot take root within us. It will be like seed sown on rocky ground. Even if it sprouts with leaves, it will die. A rootless plant cannot survive the often harsh elements of water, wind, sun, and cold. Just so, the Word of God within us cannot thrive without roots. Yes, every seed is sown with hope, but not every seed will take root and grow and bear fruit. If the soil is not properly prepared, if the seeded soil is not properly watered and tended, even the best seed will die. Hardened to the hand of the sower, the rootless plant will wither and fall away. The untended plant will be choked by thorns, weeds of evil. Friends, Jesus was not gentle with his disciples. He bluntly told them that the cares of the world and the lures of wealth can choke out the seed of God's Word so that it never yields fruit. But when that soil is tended and nurtured and watered and protected, something beautiful and amazing happens. First comes the shoot, and then the leaves, and then the bud, and then the fruit. Sometimes a seed will bear much fruit, 30 times more than you would expect, 60 times more, and some even 100 times more than you might anticipate. But it all begins with the soil. In this season of Lent, you're invited to tend the soil 
and to tend the soul. You're invited to take some soil in your home and to plant a seed or to plant a little plant. And we ask you during this season of Lent to watch over the seeds, to care for them with water, with light, and with the tenderness of those who watch for God's beauty. I'm planting right now Bells of Ireland seeds. It's sort of a memento of our trip to Ireland several years ago. What you see over here are seeds that have been planted. They're ryegrass that our children, Mary's maidens, planted just last Sunday for us to deliver to some of our shut-ins and those in our church community who may not be able to plant for themselves. As you watch over the seeds you've planted, watch over your heart. Search your heart for any places where you might have neglected God's Word. Nurture the Word of God that has been sown in your heart. Visit the Scriptures. Worship with us in our online services, in our in-person worship experiences, and pray. Pray often. Search your heart for any places where your heart might have grown hard and God's Word is struggling to take root within you. I remember telling someone about my call to ministry. I said that years and years ago, probably when I was 16, God gently nudged me. And I went, huh? Nah, I don't think so. And then God nudged again and again. And I said to myself, women aren't preachers. It was 1972, and I had never met a female pastor. Then God kept nudging, and I kept praying. And then finally, proverbially, God hit me over the head and said, minister to my people. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. Don't let the hard places in your heart disrupt the rooting of God's Word in your life. And then search your heart and pull out any weeds or thorns or briars. You see, there are some things that fell into our soil out on the patio. Don't let any seed take root in your life that God did not sow. Throughout this season of Lent, tend to your heart as if it were a living seedbed for the Word of God. Then when our journey takes us to the dawn of Easter, we will stand with all the saints of God outside an empty tomb. And there, we will embrace new life. Let us continue the Lenten journey together. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that our tending of the soil may be a reminder of your gift of life, and that we may daily remember that only by your precious and gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior, through whom we pray. Amen.
we go into the season of Lent with a somber sense of repentance. But what we are really hoping you will do this year is let all that is within you that is dead truly die. What we hope is that as you nurture the soil, you will see beautiful plants come forth. And as you nurture your soul through the reading of Scripture, through daily prayer, through worship, and through opening your heart to God, that you will find new life. We serve a risen Christ. Go in His name to live in the way of Jesus. Amen.